All right, here's our project for this week. We're building a path. I mean, there's a path here up to the top gravel or granite path that we laid out earlier. But then we get to this point, it gets a little too steep. Uh, let's get down low so you can see it better. So it's possible to walk up this hill, it's okay, but when it gets muddy, it's kind of uh, uh, not that great. So we can see what the slope is. It's easy to overestimate how, how big a slope something is. Like this looks like it's maybe 40% slope, but turns out these are inclinometer, it's about a 20 degree slope. So it'd be nice to put some steps in here. And our first job is to calculate how many steps we need and uh, how big they're gonna be. So let's let's take some measurements. All right, so we need two basic measurements to uh, figure out these steps. So the first thing is called the, the uh, run, which is how long of a series of steps do we need to get up to this uh, level where we have our granite path. So we want the final step to be, we're going to remove these rocks as needed. So you're just here to keep the gravel from moving out. So we want the final step to be right in this area. So there's going to be a piece of wood that's the top of the step right here. So we're going to see how far we need to, uh, how, how long of a, uh, a run is our, um, is our uh, series of steps. So it starts to get steep around 11 feet. Okay, so our, our run is 11 feet. Now we need to calculate the rise. All right, to calculate our rise, we're going to use the laser level. So this is the level. So you can see, you can set it level. On this end, it's got a laser. So you turn the laser on by pushing this uh, button here. And then you can see there's a laser, laser pointer. So we want to point this laser right at the top of the steps over there. Let me get up another step up here. There, now you can see better. So we're pointing, we're making sure the laser, the level is, le uh, Laser level is level by using this bubble. And then we're lowering it down so that it's pointing right at the top of the step there. Okay, and then we measure from the ground up to the bottom of the level. And we get about, uh, let's see, make sure I got this lined up here. We get about four feet. Actually, I'm gonna start back here. So. Uh, four feet six inches so 64 inches or 54 inches so four feet uh, six inches so, so that's our rise so our there's a a general calculation that's used for making steps that are comfortable to walk on from this laser uh, that's called that's that's uh, called the rise to the run so you want to you won't have your steps too steep or it's not comfortable to go up and down if you have them too long then you got to take two steps for each step. So we're going to use a calculator, online calculator. I'll put a link to this in the uh, show notes uh, to calculate what our what our uh, step geometry is. So let's get down on the ground and we'll calculate. It. All right, so here's our calculator. It's automatic stair calculator. So the rise is um, 54 inches, and the tread thickness. Now you're going to see in a minute that our tread thickness is only. Uh, 0.75 and our target stair height is about seven feet that's okay and the depth that should be about right and then we use calculate there's the calculate button here okay so this says uh eight steps which is what i calculated before and uh the length here the total run for this uh for these this nice set of steps here that aren't too steep is 86 inches. Now we're, we have 11 feet, which is over 100 inches. So, so our length is plenty, um, plenty long enough to cover a nice uh, step geometry. Now our steps will be slightly, it'll be less steep than this. That'll make it even easier to walk up. So, all right. So that's what we're going to do, and I'll show you why our step tread thing is only 0.75, and I'll show you the materials we're using on this project. All right. So here's a lot of our materials. We're going to be using. Um, Pressure treated four by fours. 
And for the step height, this is a three and a half inches. We want a seven inch, approximately seven inch step height. Uh, we're gonna be stacking two on top of these. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that and keep them together. And then for the treads, we're gonna use these uh, redwood fence boards. So the pressure treated wood will be on the ground, pushing the ground. So we wanna use pressure treated wood because it'll prevent rotting. And we'll go into that a little bit later. And these treads are nice and wide so you can put your foot on it. And then uh, we want to we want to clean up the front of it. We, we want to hide this pressure treated wood. So when we have two of these stacked up, we're going to put another uh, um, another uh, part of the fence board up against the face of it. So it look like a fence board this way, fence board that way, at a, kind of a 90 degree angle. And then in the middle, touching the ground, the, f the fence the fence boards will touch a little bit of the ground, but they won't be as much contact as the four by four so um then it'll it'll look nicer because this this wood is kind of ugly so it's got these little these little uh um uh cuts into it because that that lets the pressure treating uh chemical soak into the uh wood farther so that it prevents it from rotting and um now to help, so these, these two stacked uh, four-way fours are not going to be very stable unless they stabilize. So we're going to be using this um, liquid nails uh, construction adhesive, which is good subfloor. Floorboard deck is a good one because it works in all temperatures and it also will work on wet lumber. So these four by fours I got last fall and uh, it rained so much that I didn't have time to do the project. So I got a couple more today to have enough to fill. And th these are still kind of wet. So. This will be a good thing to get against to get the uh, four points to stick together. And while they're drying, so we're going to be um, clamping them in, in these clamps. And while it's drying, we're going to be putting in some uh, decking screws at kind of a like toe screwing, so connecting one to the other so it'll make it stronger. Now you've got this stacked four by four that's going to be kind of tippy, so. To prevent it from tipping and anchor to the ground, we're going to use this uh, rebar that I salvaged from a patio we had in the backyard. This is that was about 20 years ago. It's been sitting out in the elements, so it's a little bit rusty. But so these are just under two feet long. We're going to cut them in half using our Rage metal saw, and then we're going to drill holes in the stack four by fours using this uh, long drill here. This is a half inch drill. So this. The diameter of this uh, reboard is just about half an inch, a little, bit, a little bit more, so that'll make a nice tight fit. So we're going to drill two holes in the uh, stack 4x4s, four four, and I'm going to drive this rebar into the ground, and uh, that'll keep the uh, stairs from tipping around. Should lock them in place. I think two is enough. That should be enough. We'll see. We could put a third one if we don't think it's stable enough. Just drill a third hole. And uh, uh, the 4 by 4s are treated, but when you cut them, then the cut end is not treated because the, the chemical doesn't soak all the way to the center of the board. So once we cut the boards, we're going to be, to cut the 4 by 4s we're going to be using this wood preservative to soak the end so that it doesn't, so that uh, it helps prevent rotting. So this has copper in it. That's what prevents uh, termites and other bugs from eating the wood. So... I bought this uh, paint tray, so this is uh, the right size to uh, immerse the end of this board. And we'll, we'll pour that, uh, pour this into here. Grab a little bit here before we pull it out. So, so that's that's what that's for. And what else have we got? We've got our drill here. So now these. Um, Fence boards can split. They're pretty thin. This is why the the, the uh, thickness of the uh, tread thickness is only going to be three quarters of an inch because that's what these are. These are kind of thin. They can split. So we're going to be using our uh, our countersink drill. So this is a nice drill. So it's got a it's got a bit on this side that'll fit these uh, deck screws. So once you're ready to screw them in, you put the deck screw. Before you do that. Use this side, which has got a drill and a countersink. So you drill through the uh, fence board into the 4x4s underneath it. Then you flip this around, 
I'll show this again when I'm actually using it, but then you can just drive these screws in. And since there's a countersink, this will drive in nicely and it won't split the wood. So that's important. So for our liquid nails, uh, caulk or uh, caulking, we're going to use our caulking gun. So this will fit in there. I'll show you how to use that. And then to drive the uh, uh, rebar in through the holes we drilled in the 4 by 4s we're going to use this 5-pound sledgehammer. We've got this uh, cross uh, square to draw lines across the boards when we cut them. All right, so here's my Makita chop saw. It's had it at least uh, 20 years and it's still going strong. I don't use it, I mean, I, I don't do that many projects, but when, it, when I need to use it, it works great. First, we're going to be using safety glasses. And when I cut, particularly I cut uh, press sheet wood, I'm going to wear N95 masks because I don't want to breathe in those, uh, those chemicals. And we're just, we're just going to be discharging into the uh, bushes over here. So all the cut wood will go over there. That's fine. That's a good, I don't want to try to collect it and dispose of it somehow. It'll just be out in the environment here, which is fine. I can just mulch. So that's pretty much all of our tools. We have our, uh, our DeWalt uh, drill driver. I can show that. This is really handy. It's in a Bosch box because the box, this box, this this one came in a bag, which I don't like a bag. So this is my old uh, drill. So this is my uh, 20 20 volt uh, brushless Dewalt uh, drill driver. So it's got two speeds. One is for driving screws, and two is for for uh, drilling. So there's two. It's also got a clutch. So when you're um, if you're just drilling, put it on two, and then you put this on the uh, drill bit here. But if you're driving in uh, screws, you don't want to overdrive them. So you can put this clutch on uh, whatever setting you need. And then as it drives in, and when it has resistance, it'll start slipping. It's a slip clutch. clutch. So that's really nice so you don't overdrive uh, your screws. So you can just throw on a low number. And if it doesn't go all the way in, you just bump it up a little bit. So, so we'll be using this. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started cutting the wood. And we need to calculate how wide the steps are going to be. So let's go over and take a look at that. All right, so how wide should we make our steps? That's always a question. So there is enough room here to basically do a three foot wide step, which is a little bit nicer, but we've got this problem with this um, footing, or this uh, footing here, that could get in the way as we go up the hill. And also wood is expensive. So we're going to go with two foot wide steps, which, you know, we're not trying to have two people uh, go up and down at the same time, so. So I'm going to put up a nice, safe way to get up and down this hill. So two feet wide is enough for one person to walk up and down at a time. So, so that'll save a lot of wood and um, it'll be fine. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about is I waited. This is uh, February. We had a bunch of atmospheric rivers come through here and, and the ground was soaked. So I, I wanted to do work in the springtime when the ground is still still uh, diggable. So in the, in the, in the, in the summertime, it's going to be hard as a rock. So now this ground is still wet so you can uh, dig into it easily because we're going to be burying the bottom um, uh, four by four slightly into the uh, into the uh, dirt here so it'll be more stable we're going to make a little platform for each step all right all right let's get the cutting set up and we'll see how that goes if you like this video please give it a thumbs up post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and i'll try to respond that's all for now, but more videos are coming, and if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signy signing out, and keep looking up.